no no one on Alva owns their own their own house. Everything is owned by the estate. So no one on Alva has ever owned anything apart from the landowner. I think the the rest of the world could take inspiration from what's hap happening in Scotland. The population's just been decimated through private ownership. It's important to be empowering communities at a local level because I believe that they know what's best for their land. Definitely as a model that could be replicated in other countries and I think perhaps it is something that should be seriously looked at for other places as well. Uh, we're looking for its social and economic development, um, including and particularly actually repopulation. We want to get people living there again. There's only six people there at the moment. If we just renovated the six ordinary houses and got, say, three people into each of those, we'd straight away we'd have 18 people living there. So repopulate it and get a, a, a dynamic going and new businesses coming in and just give it, a, give it hope for the future. 431 persons own half of all the privately owned rural land. And that has built up a pattern of power relations, particularly in rural areas, where ordinary folk who may rent or may own their domestic dwellings do so in the context of quite large-scale private land ownership, which is also traded on the international property market. It is serious where you have got absentee landowners, who may live in other parts of the United Kingdom or indeed other parts of the world. There are about 37 billion acres of habitable land across the world. Indigenous people and local communities occupy 65% of it. And yet these groups, a population of 1.5 billion, barely own 18% of the land they occupy. So much land in the world is owned by so few. Throughout history, people in power use land to control economic resources and retain political control, further exacerbating inequality. Thankfully, there's a fix. It's called land reform. Land reform means changing the law to change who owns the land. It's a radical idea, transforming the very root of power. Land reform can take land from the ruling class and give it to the historically oppressed. There are numerous goals of land reform, reducing poverty, expanding rural development, returning land to its previous owners. However, there are dangers. Land reform can mean seizing land from people without any redress. And throughout history, it's caused violence and started revolutions. However, the world is facing a massive population explosion. And the pressure on land for food, water, and housing is growing. Readdressing how land is used is an urgent issue. Can humanity afford to keep so much land in the hands of so few? I know that when my daughter was at school the other day, they were, they were talking to the children about if the community owned Alva, what would they do with it? And I know that Matilda said she would want to have people living in the house so there were more children here. Sorry. Land, particularly in places like Alva, is of absolute central importance to the economy. There's a history in Scotland of large-scale private ownership of land because the people that historically have typically owned them haven't lived there. Uh, this this building, it was for a short time used uh, as a holiday let. It was lived in up until I think about six years ago and it then wasn't relet to anyone else or to a family. So it, it's not been lived in permanently since then. The first one is just one bedroom, so that would maybe suit a couple or a single person. And the other one is a two bedroom, and they're both uh, empty and occupied. 
Recent legislation has given communities who live in Scotland the right to register an interest in buying parcels of land. I think there's been such a lack of investment in the infrastructure and it's got to such a state now that instead of spending a small amount of money every year to maintain buildings, now obviously you take a larger amount of money and I think that's a good excuse not to let properties out. Twenty years ago the island was depressed because there wasn't very many people, there wasn't very many job opportunities. People didn't have security on their houses or businesses, so that meant they weren't going to invest time and money. And there were 64 people here, which is not a huge amount for a, a small community. We're now, population's now over 100, and there's quite a lot of young children about. And it's just a, it's just a far more vibrant atmosphere altogether. The, the, the first owner that I experienced, he manipulated people and he didn't follow through on a lot of things. We're sitting here, we're sending him faxes, asking him questions, what, you know, we want secure leases and all the houses. And we never got a single response to any of the messages that were sent him. So that kind of gave us the confidence to actually look at a buyout as being a very real proposition. When an island or a big chunk of land goes up for sale, you don't know who you're going to get. So it could be a good guy or it could be somebody terrible who lives in another country who never shows face, never spends any money there. To actually do it is really hard work. If somebody else owned egg, they could set up something that we regarded as being completely inappropriate. And they can do it. Whereas, you know, it's up to people here exactly what happens here. It's a mixture of, of ways people have got here. Some, some people have actually bought a house here and moved here. Some of them are folk that grew up here. Dean arrived one night, he was kayaking around the, the west coast, arrived in a kayak and never left. <laughs> I actually moved to Egg on my boat. I have a 15 metre sailing yacht. My son and I have been living on that for seven years. It's a really vibrant, fantastic feeling of being able to have a say and being able to do something, taking ownership of, of what's around you, being a caretaker and yeah, it's fantastic. And that's what egg allows. I have sheep, I grow vegetables, I'm planting woodland, and then I also, I, I, I'm pushing up a yurt, so I'm going to be able to bring in money from tourism. I think it's really important, especially nowadays with all the problems that we're facing in the world, that people do have, um, have the ability to, to take ownership of, of their lives and of what's around them. So we've had interest from quite a number of people who'd like to live in Alva. There's an immediate need for housing, as well as people from further afield that have expressed an interest in moving here. I think that obviously not everyone who comes here is going to find it for them. I think we would be naive to think that everyone will come and it will be idyllic. So it's really important globally that we begin to understand land governance better because we only have one planet. The challenges facing this planet in terms of climate change, soil erosion, pollution, resource depletion, population pressure are so significant that we need to manage the environment in a way that can sustain life on Earth and mitigate some of the damage that we've done to the planet since the birth of industrialization. We have to engage with those who own and control that land. 